Our first step in analyzing this circuit is to draw in the current. Now you'll notice that the batteries are oriented in opposite directions. Look at battery two and the EMF is pointing in a clockwise orientation and the EMF of battery one is pointing in a counterclockwise orientation. So the question is, will the current be clockwise or will it be counterclockwise? And the fact that the EMF of battery one, which is 12 volts, is greater than the EMF of battery two means that battery one will sort of win this little tug of war of EMF. So in other words, the EMF of battery one being larger will force the current to actually flow in the counterclockwise direction. So we're going to draw a counterclockwise current. We'll label it I. And then after doing that, we would like to apply Kirchhoff's loop rule. Now you can begin the loop rule at any point within the circuit. We will arbitrarily select this point right here to begin our loop. In addition, we're going to move along with the current. We're going to move in a counterclockwise direction. So we can draw our little loop direction also counterclockwise. As we travel counterclockwise through this loop, the first circuit element that we're going to encounter is this battery right here. And we can see that we are moving in the same direction as the EMF. It's important to note that because when you're moving in the same direction of the EMF of the battery, then your potential change will be positive. So to begin our loop rule, we would have a positive potential change equal to EMF1. So we could just write that down accordingly. Again, it's positive. Now, as we continue our counterclockwise journey through the circuit, the next element we're going to encounter is this resistor labeled R2. Now, hopefully we know that the potential change across a resistor is equal to the current that is flowing through that resistor multiplied by the resistance value of that resistor. Furthermore, what we want to notice is as we are moving through this resistor, once again, we are moving in the same direction as the current. Now, when you move in the same direction as the current through a resistor, your EMF will be negative. The change in the EMF will be negative, I should say. So, in other words, as we go through R2, we're going to write minus the current times R2. As we continue our counterclockwise trek through the circuit loop, we encounter R1 next. Again, we're moving with the current, so it's going to be a negative EMF change. We're going to multiply the current by the resistance value R1. We continue along and then we encounter the other battery. This time you'll notice we're moving against the direction of the EMF. We're traveling sort of downward, whereas the EMF is pointing upward. When you move against the EMF of the battery, then your potential change will be negative. So we're going to write minus E2 here. And then finally, as we continue counterclockwise, we return to where we started, that blue dot. Once you return to your starting point, you set these potential changes equal to zero. So this entire equation will be set equal to zero. In part A, our job is to find the current. So we're going to want to try to solve this equation right here for the current I. We're going to need some room to do that. So let's come down here. And to solve for I, what we might want to do is actually add the current terms to the other side. So we're going to add IR2 and IR1 to both sides of this equation. They'll cancel out on the left side. And this gives us EMF1 minus EMF2 is equal to the current multiplied by the resistance values. We're going to go ahead and factor out the current. So it would look like this. By factoring it out, this enables us to divide both sides of the equation by the sum of these two resistances here. And so now we have an expression for the current. All we need to do is plug in the given values. So let's scroll back up. We know that EMF1 was the 12 volts and EMF2 was the 6 volts. So up in the numerator, we're going to have 12 volts minus 6 volts. And then divided by R2 plus R1. And R2 was 8 ohms and R1 was 4 ohms. This is going to give us the current value. So up there in the numerator, it looks like we're going to have 6 volts divided by 12 ohms will equal our current. And of course, if we divide these out, we're going to get 0.5. The standard unit of current is amps. So the correct answer to part A is that the current is equal to half of an amp. We scroll back up to see what they want us to do in part B. 
In part B, they ask for the dissipation rate in resistor 1. Now, dissipation rate is another term for power. So what they're really asking us to do in part B is to calculate the power that is developed in resistor 1. So we're going to call that P1. We might know the equation here. The equation for power through a resistor is the current flowing through that resistor squared multiplied by the resistance value. So we're going to take the current that we just obtained. Don't forget to square it. And they're going to multiply that by the value of R1, which was 4 ohms. And if you work this out, you're going to end up with a power of 1 watt. So this would be the correct answer to part B. Part C wants us to get the power through resistor 2. So it's the same idea. The power through resistor 2 will equal the current going through resistor 2 squared times the resistance value of resistor 2. The currents are the same through the two resistors. So we're going to use the half an amp and then multiply that by the value of R2, 8 ohms. And when we work this out, we're going to see the power is equal to 2 watts. So this is the correct answer to part C. Part D, they ask for the energy transfer rate in battery 1. Energy transfer rate is also another expression for power. So they're really asking us for the power in parts D and E. Part D, again, wants the power or energy transfer rate in battery 1. Well, the power equation that we can use for battery one would be the current multiplied by the EMF of battery one. So all we need to do is take that current again of half of an amp, multiply that by the EMF of battery one, which indeed was 12 volts. And if we work this out, we get a power for battery one of six watts. Part E, we're going to do the same sort of calculation, but we'll do this for battery number two. So we're going to take that current and multiply that by the EMF of battery two, which was the six volts. And this ends up equaling three watts. Let's see what they want in the final parts of the question. They ask for whether the energy being is being supplied or absorbed by battery one, and then the same question for battery two. So. Let's take a look at our picture again and recall that we knew that the current was flowing in a sort of uh, counterclockwise direction. And here's the basic idea. If you look at battery number one right here, you see the EMF is pointing to the right and the current that's flowing through that battery is also pointing to the right because it was going in that counterclockwise direction. As long as the current and the EMF within a battery are pointing in the same direction, then that battery is being discharged, basically. So we could say that energy is being supplied by battery one. That would be the correct answer for part F, is that it is being supplied. And again, that's simply because the direction of the EMF and the direction of the current are the same. But now look at battery two. Given the fact that the current is cycling in a counterclockwise direction, then the current would be traveling in the opposite direction of EMF2. And in that case, we say that that battery is absorbing energy. So that would be the correct answer to part G. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, my Venmo ID is below. But if not, no problem. I appreciate you taking the opportunity to watch.